Hey guys, welcome back. And today we are going to be focusing on our Dendrobates leucomelas, the bumblebee dart frogs. So we have a new enclosure from Machek at Tropical Factory. As always, Machek does not disappoint. A lot of our arboreal enclosures up here, uh, we have had from Tropical Factory. Uh, the enclosures have always been superb. So we have now brought another enclosure uh, which is a bioactive setup for our poison dart frogs. We're going to be moving our poison dart frogs from our big Exo Terra, um, where we've got again full bioactive setup, lots of plants, etc. And we're going to be moving them into this new tropical factory uh, bioactive setup. With that enclosure, we have some other things coming, so I'm going to keep it to continue to grow my plants. All of these enclosures here that you see with the LEDs are going to be having um, plants put into them and they are going to be also uh, converted into full bioactive setup. So I will be adding some things like more springtails, um, dwarf white isopods, etc. Putting live plants in there um, and yeah, hopefully I'd, I'd like all of them to be as natural as possible. So we're going to be moving them across. We are also going to be taking a look at our, um, well, I don't know what to call them at the moment. They're sort of in between tadpoles and froglets. So our uh, uh, bumblebee dart frogs that we had eggs from our female, um, they have now grown all four of the legs, started to get some of their coloration, but they do still have a slight bit of tail. So we're going to be putting them into a... Uh, a little setup ready for when that tail disappears and the need to move from water to land so they don't drown. Um, so I will be showing you how to do that as well. This is the first time that I've ever bred um, poison dart frogs. Um, I did get one female to two males in my other setup and because the conditions and everything have been right for them, uh, she has dropped eggs and those eggs, well some of those eggs uh, have survived. Uh, to this point so over the moon about that so it is a learning curve for me but obviously I just want to take you on the journey with me through the steps that we've had um, and yeah and I'll just show you what I've been advised and from what research has, has shown me to do um, and we can do that together. So first things first I'm going to take you down here we'll get our poison dart frogs out of the current enclosure it shouldn't take too long to move them across I'll quickly show you some of the features in the new enclosure that I've got and then we'll focus on those little froglets as well. So let's dive straight in guys. So here we have the existing setup, all the plant life is grown in there. I have taken some of the soil from this bioactive setup, put it into the new enclosure as well, just because obviously um, like the isopods and all the other inverts that are growing within this soil, uh, in this substrate, have now been transferred into the new enclosure as well as some additionals being added. I've already taken a little bit of the plant so it does look quite messy in here at the moment until I clean all this up. If I can find these little buggers and try and get them into a catch cup, it's not going to be easy because of all of the plants that are in here. And there's the second. And there's the third. Okay, so now this is the new setup that we've got from Tropical Factory. Um, again, bioactive, so it has got natural plant life in there. 
Uh, it has got a waterfall feature in the back, which I'll show you in a second. Um, it's not enough for the froglets to drown, so it comes straight back into the drain, straight down into the drainage layer. There's a pump within the drainage layer, and it just circulates it down the background. Um, and obviously the, the moisture comes from the uh, drainage layer up into the substrate, it keeps everything watered, or as well as me giving it a mist and everything as well. At the moment, obviously because it is a fairly new setup, I started to like mould and everything, just because obviously the water's now been on, it started to get misted, etc. We've got the light source, everything, so it is all growing. We've added spring tiles into the, in there and some um, dwarf white ice pods. All that will go. Um, it's quite normal, it happened with my other bioactive setup when I first set it up as well. You started to get all of like the, um, it almost looks like cotton style mould growing across the bottom but it, it soon clears up and disappears and it's also not detrimental for your frogs anyway. So if it does happen and you are keeping dark frogs don't worry about it, um, it is normal. Show you the enclosure and we'll get these guys in. You've got a nice fancy lock here, it won't get out. Everything is sealed, so that's you know it's sealed by a double layer, um, so you're not going to get any like escapee fruit flies or anything. Same at the top. The only place that you might get a couple come out is down that tiny little gap here, down the side. But obviously you need some sort of gap because you've got to have a door. Um, so that's normal, as much as possible, um, for anything to be able to get out. So it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, can't recommend them enough. That just swings right open. Now, inside, obviously you've got the drainage layer, which you want to fill up about three quarters uh, of the way with water, and that allows the pump in the back, which is down in the drainage layer, to start circulating the water down through the background. Now obviously this helps keep up the humidity, um, allows for the frogs to get any, any drink if they should need. Uh, we've got a couple of these in here, um, which are just planted straight into the side and into the cork bark, as you can see up here. And they'll naturally grow. We've got our LEDs going across the top. We've got more here, which have already started to grow over the last couple of days. So all these top parts where you can see it's bright green. That's literally all grown over the last two days or so uh, since I've had the uh, enclosure set up. And then you've got your creepers down here. I have added some of these creepers from my old enclosure, uh, which will grow better under the LED. I've added some of our moss from our enclosures, uh, the last enclosure, which will again, hopefully take and start growing. This is that mold that you can see that I was on about. You can just see it like going across the bottom and some of the cork bark and stuff, but it's nothing to worry about and it will soon clean up. Yeah, absolutely stunning enclosures. The dark frogs are gonna love it. I have put a petri dish behind there in the dark area, um, which will allow for my female, well, the male to lay, put his sperm down and then the female will go and obviously drop her eggs on the sperm to fertilise her eggs. Hello guys, I've added some more of my old plants in there as well, which should start growing back again. Um, look a bit shit at the moment they do, but they will, they will start to grow again. Yeah. Stunning enclosure, great for the dart frogs. Um, obviously again, it will need misting as well. Uh, but that waterfall at the back will keep the humidity up. Just need to make sure that we've got uh, enough water in the drainage layer to keep it going. But as you can see, it then just goes down back into the drainage layer at the bottom and pumps back through. There's the one. There's 
There's our female, I believe. Female tends to be a little bit fatter, slightly more pear shaped than the male. So it is important if you are going to keep dark frogs, you give them enough space to climb because they do like to. As you can see, all of those have gone straight up. There's one there behind that leaf, one under there. They have all gone to the highest points of the enclosure immediately. We're moving through the night like we're from a different star Flying over streets and the broken hearts but they can even touch us, we found a different beat Paradise is waiting and we bought the lead Oh, getting caught in the mist is so many that never get out of Their feet in the fears and the doubts Ooh, but we go golden, we run to the end and we run without shame We own the game Right guys, so that's the dart frogs in their new enclosure. How amazing do they look? Uh, absolutely stunning, 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 stunning dart frogs. Um, they look beautiful in there, I love it. Thank you, Matt Check at Tropical Factory. Guys, make sure you go check out Tropical Factory and bag yourself an enclosure, whether it be for any of your spiders, um, your arboreals, your terrestrials, your fossorials, or whether you want bioactive setups, you could keep spiders in these as well, maybe not with the waterfall so much, if you really wanted you could. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're interested in any dart frogs or, or anything like that, make sure you go check them out because they are absolutely amazing. And the link will be in the description. Next, we're going to sort out our cute little baby dart frogs. These guys are stunning. So, we're going to be showing. What I've had to do, I've reduced the water inside these pots 
just because now they have their front and back legs um, they will be going onto land soon and we don't want them to drown um, now they still have a little bit of tail left so they aren't they don't need to be taken completely out of water but I'm going to show you how I'm going to set them up ready for when they are ready to come out of the water onto land um, and we'll see if we can try and get a little uh, a little sneak peek at them as well because they look absolutely adorable um, and there you are look they do have little tails still at the moment <laughs> but they will soon be ready to come out of water onto land stunning little things things first tub probably doesn't need to be this high but it's one I've got next to me it's been used next I'll bring you in so you can see And at first they will just be feeding off springtails. What you need to do is just add a load of live moss. Now this obviously helps with the humidity and the moisture because obviously the poison dart frogs do need quite a lot of humidity. bit of it probably don't need all of that but you know is popping these little guys in at around forty five degrees in there as you can see, because there's limited water, when the guys are ready to come out, they will be able to just hop straight out and into the moss. And there is the second. And I think that's as simple as it needs to be. When they're ready, they will just hop on out and uh, we'll get loads of springtails added in there for them to munch on. But like I said, they, do, they will lose the rest of their tail first. I love the way they just stop and float. Pretty cool. Ooh, no. So there you go, guys. That is our Dendrobates leucomelas poison dart frogs, uh, the bumblebee poison dart frogs, their new setup, and also our babies and how we've set them up in their little moss box, uh, ready for when they are um, able to come out onto land. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, now, a lot of people have still been asking us if we have any other merchandise still available. Uh, T-shirts, we only have a few. We've got a couple of women's medium um, or unisex large uh, available, but we are looking to release our next design of T-shirt as soon as possible. Uh, we're just waiting for our supplier to be ready uh, to, to, to get some more made. Um, we do, however, still have some of our alternative invert wristbands. Uh, so these are similar to like the ones that you get from Portsmouth Tarantulas, except for obviously it says alternative inverts on the one side and as you know the the one and only saying uh, fuck it eight 
So we've got those wristbands available. We have the same in keyring. Um, if people want any, obviously for the keys, and obviously these are the the rubber, stretchy rubber type material. Uh, we've got the same in key rings, and then we've also still got some of our alternative inverts lanyards available too. Uh, so that's the only merch that we've really got at the moment. We have got a few of the posters left which are A2 and have multiple pictures on them. Um, other than that we've got no mugs available at the moment and we've not got many t-shirts. I am also looking to get some hoodies made so if you are interested in any hoodies or t-shirts uh, or any of this merch just drop me a message on Facebook at Kieran Brandt or you can also find the Alternative Inverts Facebook page or Alternative Inverts on Instagram but all the links to our social media um, to become a member to our channel everything is in the comments below. Um, Again, I do do members only giveaways as well um, and the members only giveaway for the Flamingo Carlos Roofer Slings will be drawn next week. Um, so if you are a member and you, if you're any of the new members and you haven't checked out that video on how to enter, make sure you go check that out. Uh, if you are in the UK, you will get the slings. If not, you will get some other merchandise um, and some other goodies um, instead. So yes, make sure you go check all those links out down in the description. I hope you enjoyed the videos, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really does help. Uh, we are close to our 2,000 subscriber milestone, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's happened in such a quick space of time. Uh, I think we're around 40 or 50 subscribers away now. Um, so yeah, go, go hit that subscribe button, guys. It is free. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace out. Have a good one. Bye-bye.